Good Tuesday afternoon, everybody. Hope you're doing well. Being that it is Tuesday, we've got another edition of Personnel Decisions Tuesday. And with the season that it looks like we're about to have and the temperature of the team going into 2022, it's of the utmost importance that we fairly and correctly evaluate our front office um, before the end of this season. So once again, we'll be focusing on decisions made in the most recent offseason by the front office, and we'll be trying to objectively and fairly evaluate the decisions made on, in terms of who we brought in. So going to start, as always, with the free agent re-signings, and then we'll move on from there. So re-signings included Chris Carson, who did not play again, and with each week that goes by with Carson not playing, that re-signing, even though it was reasonably priced, becomes more questionable. It almost seems like, with the way Carroll is talking about Carson, it almost sounds like he kind of knew what was up with Chris Carson and decided to give him a contract because he felt bad for him because his career was not going to last much longer and he wanted to make sure he got some money, which... I mean, I understand it sucks if you're Chris Carson to play out your rookie deal and then have this permanent spine thing come up and derail the rest of your career, but uh, Pete Carroll is the coach of the Seattle Seahawks. He's not the coach of the Chris Carsons. He needs to do what is in the best interest of this team. So when I hear Carroll talking about Carson, it almost sounds like he kind of knew this was going to be an issue and gave him long-term money anyway, which... I'm sorry, you can feel as bad for Carson as you want to, and you can acknowledge that he does deserve to get money for what he did in the first four years of his career, but that doesn't mean you give it to him when you know this is going to be a permanent problem. But we'll see where the Carson stuff goes. The good news is Alex Collins is now filling in very nicely for Carson, and now Collins is injured too, but for a guy who's making veteran minimum money this year, he is definitely earning his keep he's now touched the ball 53 times 281 yards more than Carson and two touchdowns 127 snaps this guy is very efficient this guy is very effective this guy is productive hopefully he doesn't miss too much time PFF grade all the way up to 71.3 by the way Posick did not play although he's finally eligible to play so we'll see if he ever gets on the field because Fuller's playing passably right now Puna Ford uh, did get on the field, like 42 snaps or whatever it was. He had a few tackles. I think he had, yeah, he had three tackles. And that's really about it. PFF said that he played okay. I, I think they gave him a uh, decent grade for the game. Uh, yeah, they actually gave him another score in the mid-70s. So PFF continues to think that Puna Ford's playing effectively, but nothing really stand out for him in this one. Carlos Dunlap, um, no stats recorded across his snaps, which were like, I think, 39. So no stats for Carlos Dunlap. And I think we've officially seen enough to say that either we have no idea how to utilize Dunlap or he hit the wall and hit it hard. Um, he, he is generating some pressure. I'm not saying that he's not. But this was a guy who was one of the best pass rushers in the league for us last year in the back half, and part of that is getting sacks. Part of being one of the best pass rushers in the league is getting sacks, and he's not doing it. PFF thinks he's playing good. They have him, they have him graded at about 70. That tells me that he's being efficient and effective at holding his lanes in the running game and not getting pushed out of the play but I need more than that from the guy who was supposed to be the cornerstone of our pass rush this year. We were betting a lot on Dunlap being able to be a double-digit sack guy. Some people, credibly, thought he was going to get around 13, 14 sacks this year, and that that's not happening. At this rate, he'll be lucky to get three or four. So, big disappointment there, and each week that goes by, it just gets worse and worse for Dunlap. Uh, Benson Mayoa played okay. He had a couple tackles, and his PFF grade is still pretty solid, actually, 65.8. Um, I, I feel like with Mayoa, I'm getting what I expected, which is a 
capable player who doesn't really deserve much more credit than that. He's fine. Uh, he is playing a decent amount of Sam linebacker right now because we're, we're having issues finding a solution there. But he's just a guy. And in fairness, we didn't pay him that much, so I can't criticize this too much, especially when he's missed a couple games. But uh, generally, just like a lot of players on this team, he earns a shrug of the shoulders. There are so many guys on this team who... The, the word that I use a lot lately is apathy. I have so much apathy for so many of these players, even the guys who are playing okay. They, they just don't inspire a lot of enthusiasm on my part as a fan right now. All right, now we go on to our free agent signings and trades. So Gerald Everett got back on the field on um, Sunday night against Pittsburgh, and he did make a couple catches for 40 yards. He almost had a touchdown. Great play. Uh, his catch percentage is still really high, 83.3, but he's only been targeted like 12 times in six games. I know he missed two, but uh, the usage is not where I thought it would be for Everett. So at this point, not that it matters, I'd like to see Everett get some more targets. I, I don't understand why you bring him in, a guy who was familiar with the Shane Waldron offense, a guy who was familiar playing with Shane Waldron. I don't know what the value is if you're not going to get him the ball more. So hopefully that usage goes up, especially with Geno Smith, who likes his tight ends. Uh, PFF thinks he's playing okay. 63. Sure. Whatever. <laughs> uh, Gabe Jackson played every snap. Still didn't allow a sack. Didn't commit another penalty. So he's still playing well. PFF says he's playing at about 66, which is right around the area of being a competent starter. So he's slowly but surely getting better and working himself to the point where he's a above average NFL starter to where he clearly belongs on this offensive line to where he's clearly doing his job. I, he's not the mauler that I was hoping we would get yet, but he is playing adequately, playing fine. So that's a W trade in my book. Uh, Al Woods is next. He played a lot of snaps, almost 50, had a couple tackles, and that's about it. Uh, PFF actually docked him pretty heavy for that Pittsburgh game. Uh, before the Pittsburgh game, his PFF grade was like 86. Now it's 77. So they really didn't like what he did out there. And I kind of get why, because Pittsburgh did have some su success running the ball on us. But a little surprised it, they docked him that much. But uh, still an under-the-radar effective signing for the Seahawks. Uh, Kerry Hyder is also in that camp for me. He only played 26 snaps, but he had a couple tackles, including two tackles for loss. And he recovered a fumble. So, Kerry Hyder, low-key, living up to the expectations for me this year. Um, 68 PFF grade is pretty good. So, it, it's too bad it can't be part of a better defense. But Kerry Hyder is, I think, playing a fairly effective season, given what we were expecting when we brought him in. Uh, bless you on Austin, still did not play. Sidney Jones did play, but he may never play again because he got injured. Trey Brown came in, and Trey Brown played well enough to uh, maybe permanently take that spot away from uh, Sidney Jones. So I think he played like 33 snaps, had six tackles, gave up quite a bit in coverage. PFF liked him a little better. They boosted his grade all the way up to about a 46 from where it was, like a 39. But still not really good. And um, now we can get to one of the potential shining stars of our video this week. So the draft picks and UDFAs, as usual, we don't have a lot to say here. Eskridge did not play. Forsyth, Perhan, K. Johnson all did not play. The guy who did play, however, was Trey Brown. He played 40 snaps and, and had three tackles, including that really nice stick in overtime to extend that game further than it was and give us a real good chance to go win that game. And it didn't happen, but uh, it wasn't just that, too. He was playing pretty well in coverage for the most part. PFF liked him a lot, too, 72.3. So there's a lot of stuff here that I don't like, and there's a lot of stuff here that I like, but it doesn't really matter. Like, Puna Ford is playing fine, but it doesn't matter. Al Woods is playing good. Kerry Hyder's playing good. Gabe Jackson's playing good. That stuff doesn't really matter that much. But Trey Brown playing good might matter because he's young. He can be part of a future good Seahawks team, even if this team isn't good. So Trey Brown gets a very nice grade by PFF in his first ever action, records three tackles and 40 snaps. Yeah, um, 
Sidney Jones can take a seat until something forces him back out there. And finally, we're going to take a look at our free agent departures of this most recent offseason with a new addition. So um, we've got a fifth player now, but before we get to that, Shaq Griffin played a pretty good game for Jacksonville. They got their first win. Uh, I think he had, let's take a look here, he had uh, four tackles, gave up, I think, two receptions, PFF grades up to 67. So he's playing pretty good. I don't know if he's playing $50 million or $15 million good, but he's having a pretty good season in Jacksonville on a team that is not giving him a lot of support, so good for him. Jerron Reed, he finally got to the quarterback a couple times. And when I say that, I mean he hit the quarterback. He didn't sack the quarterback. He played a decent chunk of snaps against the uh, football team, 40 snaps, had a I think one tackle and two QB hits. So he actually did get some pressure. Of course, PFF still didn't like what they saw from him. They gave him a bad grade for the game and his PFF grades all the way down to 45. So they probably saw a lot of him getting pushed around in the run game. I don't know. I don't watch every play in games that don't involve the Seahawks for the most part, but uh, they didn't like it. KJ Wright played fairly effectively for the Raiders against the Broncos. He did actually get a pretty big chunk of snaps. Um, he played a lot of snaps against the uh, Broncos and he had, I believe, four tackles. Yeah, four tackles. Nothing too remarkable, but his PFF grades all the way up to 67. Exactly identical to Shaq Griffin, so they're both having respectable seasons. And KJ Wright's doing a nice job bouncing back after getting kind of embarrassed on national TV against the Chargers. Uh, Carlos Hyde Barely played and didn't touch the ball for Jacksonville against the uh, Dolphins. And Trey Flowers, who is the new addition to this list, did not play for the Bengals yet, so nothing new here. And that's about it. So there is some positive stuff here, but there's too many negatives now for us to really say the front office did their job. And I liked a lot of the moves that they made this offseason, and I still think a good chunk of those moves were reasonable, but... They didn't supplement it with enough, and they didn't hit in the areas they really needed to hit. And you have things like the Dunlap signing and the Carson signing starting to really fade. The Everett signing is not terrible, but it's not having the impact we were hoping for. But this Trey Brown thing, if Trey Brown turns out to be the real McCoy, that could save a big headache going forward. So that one of the most interesting things to watch the rest of this season so hopefully this team is able to give Trey Brown as much time as he can possibly get this season to learn on the job and get ready for the next couple of years because if you can build a secondary around Trey Brown and DJ Reed at corner and those guys are playing well and those guys can work well together that's a big headache that you're removing from the equation. So I'm rooting for him. I, I was pretty ambivalent when we drafted him, but uh, he, he won me over a little bit with that Pittsburgh game. We saw stuff that we haven't seen from a Seahawks corner in a little while. So, hey, there's hope yet for this rookie class. Not a lot. It's not a particularly bright, shining hope, but I liked what I saw, and I'm definitely going to keep an eye on him going forward. All right, see you guys later. Go Hawks. More videos coming later on. Hopefully we get some further updates on some of these injuries. And I will see you later. Go Hawks.